Sun Tzu once said, A clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. And since I have never done router-based freehand inlay before, but I was planning on doing some very simple projects with it in the future, I decided to try a fairly complex project. That way I could tackle the very simple projects in the near future with ease. I'm currently in the midst of trying to set up an online business that I have named Wooden Leg Woodworking. So my idea for this project was to make a wooden leg with the word woodworking inlaid in a contrasting color. As you have already seen at this point, I cut the leg out of a piece of walnut. And here you can see me cutting out all the little letters out of a piece of maple. Here you can see me tracing out the letters onto the wooden leg. Now this next part, unless you know me in real life, it's not going to be nearly as funny. But I have a cousin David who I talk to on the phone most every night. And while I was working on routing out the first letter, he gave me a phone call. Enjoy. You are a loser. What do you mean? You're just a loser. But like, tell me honestly, why haven't you made a wooden leg? Perhaps you are a fool. Because your setup isn't advanced enough to make such things? Is that what you're telling me? No, I am quite capable of making wooden legs, thank you. Well then, why would you call me a fool when I tell you to make a wooden leg? Because you are a fool. Now I do wish to sincerely apologize to the four people who will watch this video and not know me and have no idea what that was about, but I know at some point in his life Cousin David will probably watch that and be thoroughly amused as well as alarmed that he called me and asked me why I had never made a wooden leg while I was, in fact, making a wooden leg. I basically used a mini plunge router setup to route out the space for the letters. Now here you see me writing in a secret message that I will tell no one, knowing full well that it's about to be covered up and thus vanquished for all eternity. Well, maybe I'll tell one or two people at some point, but definitely not anytime soon. I do have a picture of it on my phone though, before I covered it up. You might be like, oh, why'd you put the glue in the two O's before you started the camera? And that's because that's where the message was written, so if I hadn't put the glue in, you could have seen what the message said. This little rubber glue brush is not at all a necessary thing, but I very much enjoy using it. It might even take me longer than using my finger, but it's so much fun to use. I then just press the contrasting letters into their routed spaces. I will say, though, that after I turned off the camera, I came back and squished everything in a vise to make sure it had properly set. Usually what one would do is they would use a hammer or a mallet to make sure everything is fully set in its space, but I did not have a hammer or a mallet handy, so I just used my vice. This whole video I've had to rush the voiceover because I feel like I don't have enough time to explain what's going on, yet here I have a solid 10 seconds of space, so I'll just waste it by saying that. After the glue had dried, I ran into a bit of a situation because usually one would use like a flush cut saw or something of the sort to cut the pieces that are sticking out flush. But I do not have a flush cut saw, so I started out using a coping saw. And after about a minute and 30 seconds of trying to use that, I decided perhaps that wouldn't be the fastest option and went over to the table saw. The table saw worked quite adequately, but as you will see in a second, it left me with quite a bit of dried glue and all sorts of things still on the board. And while one can kind of see how it's going to end up looking, we're nowhere near the final result. So I took it over to my bench, my makeshift bench that is, and began sanding it with some aggressive 80 grit sandpaper. I then used a glue bottle to fill in any gaps that had occurred because of my sloppy routing, and then sanded some more. I then took a router 
and round it over the top side of the leg. What I mean by the top side is the side that had the letters on it. I had originally planned on rounding over both sides, but when I saw how good it looked after I had rounded over just the one side, I decided to keep it at that. Because oftentimes when you try to fix a good thing, rather than becoming great, it just gets a lot worse. I then proceeded to sand it all the way up to 220. And then I'm using this Howard's Feed and Wax as a finish. It's very easy to apply. You just kind of wipe it on and then wipe it off. It makes the color of the wood just absolutely pop. And it's almost impossible to mess up. This finish went into the wood like a man going into a house. And I've seen a lot of great men go into a lot of great houses. But this was truly a fantastic finish going into a fantastic piece of wood. Far better than any men in houses I'd ever seen. I will say though that I had to spend a lot of time rubbing the toes as well as the upper thigh to get the results I wanted, but your mileage may vary with that. That's the end of the video. You will see me apply the finish for another 20 or 30 seconds. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Until next time, go find some crocodiles. And by that I mean check out my channel to see my other videos. Have a good. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.